Robbie 574 wanted to know where my 78s are. Well, they're they're inside this thing. I don't I didn't have uh 78s when I was growing up. Uh they weren't really prevalent back then. Uh, 78 means 78 RPM. I told you in my other videos that there a lot of record players only had two settings. Well, there's some of the older ones had three settings and one of and the third setting or the first setting actually was a 78. Now what this is, this plays 78s, and it is called a phonograph. Now a lot of people call them Victrolas because Victrola is actually a trade name. And uh, Victrola was probably one of the popular manufacturers of phonographs. And the way it works is uh, you've got the actual phonograph in here. Excuse the lighting, I'm in my media room so there's not a whole lot of lighting in there. But um, that's where you put the, the record for the phonograph and uh, here's storage on this side I'm trying to be mindful of the lighting here storage on this side now the way it works there's no electricity this is your power this crank fits in over here there we go and you have to kind of find the sweet spot and crank it up See if you can hear it crank up. And it should stop. Um, hold on, I'll be right back. Let me get a flashlight. Well, boys and girls, I found that this uh, this thing is uh, broken. So, but I'm just going to show you uh, just some of the work workings. This back here is how you turn it on and off. That. Uh, lever back there there's a there's a spring inside this bus and I'll, I'll pull it out later for you can so you can look at it what uh, it, it this whole thing is mechanical there, there are no electronics on it whatsoever so you, you pull the lever to the left it spins and what happens is when the arm swings all the way over and hits that lever it stops and it keeps the record from continuing to move now here's the needle here this whole this whole arm swings so I'm going to have to play it manually, and it's amazing there are no electronics whatsoever. This this needle, um, let me see if I can show this side of it here. The needle transmits all the sound into this thing and this diaphragm, and the diaphragm carries the sound all the way around this tube, and it goes down that tube and into a speaker and the speaker is right here and what you would do is you open this and um, slide it back and that's the speaker no electronics no nothing so let me just play it manually for you and you can hear how loud it is without any electricity just the vibrations amplified one cool thing I did discover uh, was inside this this record player was a receipt and I don't know if it's for this record player or not but um, the name is right uh, having belonged to my mother's wife's family and it says uh, 19 I believe that's a 4 1934 and it was a receipt for 4 Right here, four pounds, no shillings, and no pence. So there's down here, that's the pound symbol, four zero zero, four pounds. And I can't make out the handwriting. I'm not quite sure what it's for, but uh, this is really old. All right, again, I'm going to play it for you. So you hear the sound coming out, right? Put this back. And this lifts up. I've already pulled the screws out of it. These little needle containers come out. And uh, I had to remove some screws here and there. But uh, uh, I was amazed when I 
when I open this, what actually it looks like underneath. All right, you ready? <clears throat> That's what it looks like inside. Just a horn that's connected to this doohickey. And this is the speaker right here. That's what makes all that noise. Now let's take a look at the, uh, the actual workings. Oh my gosh. Uh, try not to scratch up the edge there. This, this is it. This is the, the workings of the turntable. Um, what I found out was there's a coil spring in here that has either the tab that, that locks on to the cranking mechanism is either broke or has sprung, so um, I have to break into it and um, reattach it or have to, to re-bend that tang to get it to uh, seat back into the mechanism. But, set the tripod up here but um, here's the crank what you would do is you stick this into the side of the Victrola and uh, move this out of the way you would crank it and what it would do it would it would turn this gear and it would wind the it would wind the thing inside. It would wind the uh, the spring, and then the spring would would turn backwards and spin uh, the turntable. Looks like it's going. I don't know, maybe not. But anyway, uh, so then what you would do is uh, there's a let's see, there's a. See that locking mechanism there? Let's see here. See that lock? So you would turn it backwards to remove the crank handle, and then the the Victrola is ready to go. Or you can leave the crank handle in there, it doesn't matter. But then what it would do is to spin spin the turntable um, this would spin this would um, turn this big gear here say a flywheel going so it's almost like a clockwork back here and then that would in turn spin the turntable on the other side now these are not my records uh, I've never heard of some of these this one is the Sterling Trio, Mickey by the Sterling Trio in here. Uh, and these are heavy. They're they're real thick. They're they're not they're probably stuff called Bakelite, which is kind of the first uh, synthetic material. Here's another one, Granny, sung by Charles Hart and Elliot Shaw. I have no idea who they are. And the Sheik. Ooh, we gotta listen to the Sheik, right? Um, we'll listen to that later, at the end. Uh, this is the Who Knows by Queens, and this one's broken, by the way, so you can see there's, um, it's, it's kind of that plastic material all throughout, so, um, I used to, I think there were some Later, the, the 78s, the modern day 78s, modern day, uh, in the 70s or 60s that were, they had aluminum on the inside of them. I know a lot of people turn them in for aluminum uh, recycling. Uh, a friend of mine, I remember, had them and, and he would, he actually bent them. They're kind of funky. Um, for I'm forever blowing bubbles. <laughs> um, me, uh. Zoom in down a little bit. Forever blowing bubbles. And the record covers weren't that fancy back then. Uh, beautiful Ohio. Oh, Henry Burr. 
Let's see. When you're in the arms of the one you love. And... Ooh, Irving Berlin. The Venetian Isles. That's worth a listen to. Don't bring Lulu. And nobody knows what a redhead mama can do. Pretty spicy for the 30s or 40s, whenever these were made. I Love You from Little Jesse James. And On the Blue Lagoon. On the Blue Lagoon. Uh, there's a bunch. I'm not going to go through them all. Too many parties and too many pals. What were these people listening to? Roses. Uh, Margie. I'm a lonesome little raindrop. Oh, holy night. Ah, oh, there you go. There's a wholesome one. Silent night. I might listen to that some other time. Um. <laughs> du du legst mir im Hersen. Yeah, sounds like a party, uh, party record. Ida sweet as apple cider. Oh, Ida sweet as apple cider. Jingle bells. Hey, something I know. Star of the East. All right, but uh, you get the idea. I'll uh, I'll do a separate video on 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 the rest of it later. Let's uh, let's take a listen. Excuse the cord.